This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the, the Cajun, the Savory S&P Bud, and the Oak can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Mad Canadian wants me to let you all know that his uh, three box sets are now permanent. Not just a holiday treat for you all. It is a permanent set piece on the Mad Canadian website. So if you missed out on those um, those box sets during the holidays, well, you can pick one up in 2021. Um, that is the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, and the Whole Hog, which is one of each of the seasonings over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Be sure to also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% extra off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Ohio-owned, mom-and-pop-owned, veteran-owned, world-class, hand-roasted, micro-batch, roast-to-order, Perrysburg, Toledo, Ohio, organic-certified, fair-trade-certified coffee roaster. Did I get all of them? Did I miss any? You got it. Okay, awesome. They import their high-quality beans directly from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far-off lands. Uh, They have many, many great coffees. you you got a great selection of medium roast and dark roast and flavored roast. And if it's all a little overwhelming for you, just know you can pick up a sampler bag and get six different coffees so you can find the one you like the most. And once you do, you can do a subscribe and save. You can do a subscribe and save. You get a little bit of a discount uh, and you get your coffee delivered to your house on a regular basis so that you never run out. And you can do all of that and see all of those coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube and Discord? We got people in the Discord tonight. Yes, sir. Spying on us like some weirdos. <laughs> I don't know why I have to hurt the people who love me. I don't know why, Jared. You do that all the time. <laughs> it's funny because it's not true. I want. I'm drinking. I'm drinking a Lock Fifteen Brewery tonight with. Uh, it's their Christmas ale, mm-hmm. and it's a. Uh, it's got a leg lamp on it. They're out of Akron. I normally drink Ohio breweries on here. Uh, but these guys are small, even by my standards. So I wanted to make sure to give their can and their name a, a quick shout out to the YouTube audience because they're little guys and I like I like little guys. So there we go. Mm-hmm. Kyle, we have to we have to preview a Clemson football game. So are we ready to do this? Let's do it. All right. Let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Um, I peaked already. See, here's the problem. I'm monitoring our levels here. And, and I actually have like a little a, a little USB sound thing now because I'm mm-hmm. we're growing up. And I was just like, when we do all the testing, it's just like we talk normally. And then I go and I do the intro and I talk real loud. And it and then I peaked. So I don't I don't I don't like peaking, but that's just mm-hmm. me being an audio nerd. That's that's all that is. You Jared. Yeah. Mad Canadian wants to know how's the weather? Uh it's not too bad. It's, it's not too bad. I'm not gonna complain. Uh I I uh got home on Sunday and everything was covered in snow and it was a little too late and I was a little too tired to do any shoveling, so I didn't. And you know, I had to also do this podcast for the Monday morning episode. I just really didn't have the time or anything. And then I woke up Monday morning and it all melted. So it all worked out. It all works out. So really, as long as the snow melts, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get into it here, Jared. It was that, was that a, was that a sun card uh, slash TMC weather request? Is that what that was? 
Yes, that was. And you delivered well. You know. You delivered well. It's it's all, all good. Right. Let's get into some press conferences, Jared. Let's first talk about Ryan Day. Yeah. Probably the biggest probably the biggest question in everybody's mind here is Justin Fields in his thumb slash wrist. Yeah. We have uh basically two quick positive answers positive but not like glowingly positive answers we got one from from justin fields uh we have the one from ryan day in our notes uh it's a ryan day said no concerns about justin fields thumb uh justin fields also sort of gave uh, a real quick one line eh, no big deal sort of answer so we'll see that's it we'll see are they lying i mean because you're not going to, if his thumb, I'm, I'm still peeking. If his thumb is having issues, they're not going to let Clemson know that they just aren't. If mm-hmm. his thumb is in fantastic shape and he's ready to throw the ball across the entire yard, they're not going to let Clemson know that. So, oh, oh it is, it's fine. Is the answer you both uh, would accept and, and got from Ohio State. How's the thumb? It's okay. That's that's a, that's what you get. Mm, yep. Um, talking about Clemson's defense here, Ryan Day, um, say, saying that it is second to none, create a lot of sacks, have a they have a great scheme, and they know us very well. Which, yeah. Which I which I think also some of the players over at Clemson also reported back, uh, s- saying that. They still remember that that game from last year was the hardest hitting game that they've ever played. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to be any different. Mm -hmm. Ohio state's going to bring some lumber. um, And and with all due respect to Ryan day, and he's not Dabo. So he is going to go in front of the cameras and say the right things. This defense, this Clemson defense is second to many, namely the Clemson defense from last year, namely the Clemson defense from um, what was it? 2016 uh, of, of those uh, or for that matter, 2014 of all of the recent Ohio state Clemson games. This is the worst defense that Clemson has brought to the game. In my yep. opinion, their defensive line is both young and undersized. And I think Ohio state's going to be able to make some, make some gains in the trenches this particular game. Now, that being said, this is also probably the worst. Uh, that 2016 defense had some had some back-end issues too. But this is also one of the worst defenses Ohio State's brought to this game. I think so, basically everyone except Alabama's defense is completely behind their, their proper state this year. So pretty much what you're saying here, it's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh-huh. Okay. We're, there's a final score prediction coming at the end of this episode. And... Uh, Let's just say they're both in the double digits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Ryan Day also says the amount of players who have missed practice this month alone is staggering. I uh, says in some ways it, it hardens you and makes you stronger. Uh, once again, I'm going to call BS on Ryan Day. There's nothing about missing practice that is a good thing. Nothing. If missing mm-hmm. practice was a good thing, you know what they would do? They'd have more days off. <laughs> That's... That's what they would do. Yep. Uh, yeah, let's see. Last, last thing that Ryan Day says here, uh, got to make sure you're scoring touchdowns in the red zone. But if the defense is playing well, a field goal is okay. I know. We're always going to be aggressive, but at the same time, we can't be reckless. No, 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 no coach day. Field mm-hmm. goals are I mean, not fine. I mean, look, I mean, look at last year's Clemson game. Yeah. How many times we were in the red zone, had to, kick, had to get, settle for field goals. Heck, even look at the Indiana game. Indiana had to settle for field goals yep. and that pretty much almost pretty much almost caught that right there would have won the game if they were able to execute in the red zone perhaps perhaps but perhaps. The, the point remains is that Ohio State Ohio State can't be kicking field goals against Clemson now if it's like fourth and 16 and but you're still with it of, of course kick a field goal but if it's if it's under fourth and seven, six, six, yeah. seven, Ohio State needs to be going for it. And it's not like Especially their kicking has been 
completely automatic this year either. So it's not like the field goals are sure things. Yeah, especially especially with the group of wide receivers this team has here and can make plays. And yeah. with Trey Sermon, the last couple of games averaging six or seven on the ground per carry as is. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, we'll quickly go over what Dabo says. Honestly, do we have to? Because I really don't care what he says. Honestly, when I made these notes, this was relatively new news. And mm-hmm. since then, I feel like everyone's talked about it to death. So maybe we can skip it. Uh, it's uh, it's just let's see. it's it's him it's... trying to justify ranking Ohio State eleventh. Which, by the way, Dabo, thank you. Look at me, Dabo, Dabo. Thanks. You think Ohio State hasn't been playing up that disrespect card all week? It's not like they needed it anyway. They have that score from last year's game just all over the Woody Hayes all year. And, so it's not uh, like they needed the motivation. Yeah, but did you watch the Michael Jordan 30 for 30 doc where the dude was just like making up grievances against guys just because it fueled him? He would completely just make up arguments he was having with people in order to get pissed off at them and destroy them. And I, <laughs> what, whatever, whatever it is you need to, to perform like Michael Jordan or somewhere close to it, I, I say go for it. And a little extra fuel to the fire, fuel that fire. Mm-hmm. All right, that's enough. I don't want to talk about Dabo anymore. Let's, let's get into the next section here, Jared. And what's that section called, Kyle? It is time, gentlemen and ladies and all our good friends. Gentlemen, to know, ladies, and everyone in between. Yes. It is time to know your enemy. That's like the one music cue that has survived the YouTubification of this yeah, show. It, it was kind of really odd transition because i'm not used to that usually something in between so yeah I, yeah it's it just is what it is because normally we go right from sloop picks into it but no, mm-hmm. no sloop yep. picks this week so all right let's do all it. right everyone it's time to know your enemy the clemson tigers kyle. Hey, another cat another cat kyle did you know that the namesake of clemson university uh was a slave owner who fought in the Confederate war against the union. I did know that. Okay. I just wanted to point that out. No particular reason. Okay. Just All right. the, the entire university is one big Confederate monument. Just thought I'd point that out. Okay. Okay. That's it. Good to know. Moving on. Good to know. Uh, I feel like I don't really need to go into a lot of the stats here because we, we all know who Clemson and Clemson is here. They're, scoring a lot they putting up a lot of yards their defenses they're good they're good compared to a lot of teams relative to this year because we've we've seen many just defense in general has just been bad overall but their defenses i i would say they're a bend don't break they, they're letting up 17 and a half points per game which is pretty good pretty good you you let up less than 20 points a game you're you have a pretty good defense uh, we can have a conversation about that but let's let's proceed well for for the year that it is jared it's pretty good sure okay all right uh trevor lawrence travis um etn amari rogers yeah it's a stout it's a stout offense stout offense here yeah absolutely uh, what what can this team what can this team do against this uh this juggernaut of an offense. First and foremost, I believe their goal needs to be to stop the run. I, it's not, I know it's like the oldest cliche in the book, you know, stop the one or stop the run, win the game. But when you have a quarterback who everyone's touting as the next Andrew Luck, the next Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. then it is actually noteworthy to say the first thing we need to do in this game is to stop the run. Because I believe that Trevor Lawrence is going to get his yards. Ohio State's secondary and their pass rush are not good enough that you're going to stop or stifle uh, Trevor Lawrence. It's just, it's not going to happen. 
Yeah, so that's one I, of the things that that's one of the things that Ohio State struggled this year was getting to the quarterback. They haven't really had that many sacks this year, but the running defense has been pretty stout, letting up less than 100 yards per game. Uh, we, we already know how good of a defensive line Ohio State has right now. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's got to be stopping the run there, forcing forcing Lawrence to make a play. You're, you're not going. You're not going to be able to get to to Lawrence, which I think at times last year, looking back, when you had Chase Young trying to get to Lawrence, creating those creating those holes as he's trying to get, get around the edge mm-hmm. to Lawrence. It created some holes there on that defense where Lawrence just um, took his opportunities, including that really long um, rushing touchdown, he which shocked everybody. Broke contain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think what I would like to see from this defense, and of course you have to mix things up and I'm not, I'm not saying run the same defense the entire game, obviously. But as a general scheme, what I'd like to see from this defense is the linebackers taking their first step forward, and I'd like to see all the defensive backs being taking their first steps backwards. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I'd like to see some deep quarter coverages, and I'd like to see the linebackers stopping the run first and foremost. Now, what does that mean? That means you're going to give up a lot of passes in that 7 to 13, 14 yard zone. And quite frankly, I think you just have to live with that. You aren't going to stop Trevor Lawrence and you just kind of have to pick your poison. So let's stop Trevor Lawrence from running. Let's try and keep ETN the ball carrier anyway. He's going to, you know, catch some balls too. Yeah, Travis Etienne's a very accomplished pass receiver as well. But as far as running the ball, I think you can take him out. And I think you can take out Trevor Lawrence on at least designed runs. Scrambles are scrambles. They happen sometimes. But the point is, is that you, I think you just sort of give up the middle of the field. You send your defensive backs deep. You prevent big plays from happening. You prevent ETN and Trevor Lawrence from taking over on the ground. And you just force Trevor Lawrence to play and the entire offense to play flawless football and march the ball down the field seven, eight, nine yards at a time. Mm -hmm. And if they get a touchdown off that, then they do. But then, you know, of course, you can shore things up and tighten things up in the red zone. Basically, I'm saying play an NFL defense. This is a lot of what you see in the NFL. It's bend, but don't break. Let them march their way down the field. Make them do it a little bit at a time and then tighten things up in the red zone. Force them to play mistake free football. Allow a errant pass or a holding call or some penalty or some sort of miscue to put them behind the chains and then potentially have to punt Mm -hmm. or, you know, they march down the field and maybe then you can sort of put the screws in for the defense. And at that point, force them to kick a field goal, play a very NFL defense, allow nothing big over the top attempt to stop the run the best you can. And like I said, just kind of give up that middle of the field. Yep. I, I completely agree. Um, you get you got to stop Lawrence from making those plays. You look at Lawrence in any close games that he's been in so far. Uh, let's see here. This year, uh, when they played Miami, which was close to begin with, it was close. He he had to rush the ball more than five times. He rushed the ball eight times um, against um, against Virginia Tech here which it was close in the first half. I know the final score doesn't really show it, but it was close. It was like 17, 10. It was like, it should have been like 10, 10 at halftime. He had the, he had to run the ball uh, more times. And then in the last game here against Notre Dame, he rushed the ball 14 times in big games and tighter games where there's more competition. Well, I'm not going to say that because Virginia tech, but, um, but in closer competition here, Lawrence does tend to, run the ball more. And we saw that uh, last year too. 
uh, what, what was his final stats last year? Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. Yeah, he rushed the ball 16 times for over 100 yards. You got to stop. You got to stop Lawrence here. That's that's the first and foremost there. I I mean I totally agree. It's it, again this there's going to be points scored in this game. Period. There's going to be lots of points scored, and the I have no idea what the hell the the sloop cats are talking about right now in the Discord. I have no idea what the hell is happening. Just don't I, worry about it. Just just oh just my keep god going with it, Jared. Okay. Another 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 person to really keep an eye out on the offense here, Brendan Galloway, a really really good tight end for Clemson. Keep an eye out for him. As... Well, especially if Ohio State deploys the defense I'm talking about, because who ends up getting a lot of those seven to fourteen yard catches? Tight ends. So if you're trying to take the top off, you know maybe taking Amari Rogers out of the game, and if you're trying to stop Trevor Lawrence and and Travis Etienne from running the ball, sort of taking them out of the game. Mm-hmm. Who does that leave? Brandon Galloway, among other people, of course. There are a lot of talented players on this offense. Yep, absolutely. Uh, defensive here, I know mentioned briefly here, defense isn't as great as it's been in years past, but they have a lot of... Um, really good experience on the defense defensive line. As you, as Jared mentioned earlier, very inexperienced. Their starters are a redshirt sophomore, sophomore, freshman, freshman, very, very young defensive line for this Clemson team. But other than that, you got a very experienced linebacker crew um, with, uh, uh, with Slacky here, Slasky, excuse me. And uh, Spectre. Both really good uh, linebackers who can just create havoc for Ohio State here. Yeah, and Kyle, uh, Kyle, as far as the secondary goes, Ohio State will be getting a bit of a reprieve with Nolan Turner missing the first half of this game due to a very, very late game targeting call against Notre Dame. The game was over, drive didn't matter, and he got a pretty obvious targeting call. Yeah, and he's one of their best performer, performers for this defense. He's second in team in in um, tackles. He's like third in tackle for loss and leads the team with interceptions too. Just an over, just an all over the field type of player. Well, and and a and a red and, and shirt it's, senior. It's going to be it's going to hurt them, and I think Ohio yeah. State really needs to capitalize when he's out. Real coach on the field sort of guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Only one of two uh, redshirt seniors on the defense. Uh, Mad Canadian says at least he didn't throw a shoe. <laughs> I mean, there's that. He also mm-hmm. didn't punch anyone. Which okay, so there, there it is. There's the Woody Hayes joke. Okay, everyone gets one. Everyone gets one. There was ours. Fine. Okay, we did it. It's over. All right. Okay, Kyle. Uh, so. A big piece of information or a big piece of news throughout the year for Ohio State was players missing. Players mm-hmm. missing due to COVID, p- players missing. Uh, injuries have not been too bad for Ohio State this year. So, you know, it sort of plays into the six games. Ohio State's only played six games. Clemson's played 11. And I don't know if Dabo knows that. Does, is Dabo aware of that? That Ohio State Perhaps. only played six? Oh, yeah, I think, I think Dabo's heard of Maybe. that. So good news, bad news. Play the good news, bad news game. All right. Good news is Ohio State's pretty healthy. For going into a bowl game, they're a very healthy football team. Mm -hmm. So the product of only playing six games. Less chance to get hurt. They've had a lot of rest in between games. Bad news is that they've missed a lot of practice time. They've missed a lot of game development time. As Ryan Day pointed out, in his press conference, you know, there's been, you know, uh, quote, the amount of people who missed practice this month alone is staggering. So we can talk. And, you know, if, if you listen to Dabo, it's just this huge, huge advantage that Ohio State has only played six games this year. And I just want to say that we don't know. 
I could sit here and make mm-hmm. the case in the other direction, how it's bad for Ohio State. And I kind of have. But at the same time, Ohio State's not nicked up. They're not banged up. It, but it goes both ways. And anyone who's out there telling you that this is an absolute good or an absolute bad for Ohio State or Clemson in either direction, we just don't know. It's completely un charted territory before there there's not a manual for this Mm -hmm. ohio state has really just started hitting their stride now is that too little too late or is it perfect timing (laughs) we don't know we 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 just have no idea seen a a complete game from this team no we have not they they've had a bad what feels like half maybe quarter in every single game this year Mm-hmm. Now, in some of those games, they were up big and just sort of took the foot off the pedal. And do you really hold that against them? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, for example, only one quarterback has thrown the ball this year for Ohio State. That gives you any clue as to where Ohio State's at. Well, I mm-hmm. want to say that actually counted. I think I think maybe one of the other guys threw a ball and it ended up not counting, potentially. But... Only one guy threw a competitive, at least, Paul, ball this year for Ohio State. So if you're wanting to get C.J. Stroud or Jack Miller some reps this year, it didn't happen. Nope. Look at the receptions for Ohio State. Only two guys have more than 10 receptions. Do, do you know? Do you really feel like you've developed your talent beyond your two guys? Because you haven't really. That's not to say that practice doesn't matter, because of course practice matters, but game matters more than anything else. Yeah, that's just crazy. It's it's very hard to look when you compare side by side. I mean, granted, six games versus eleven games, that that is a big difference. It's half half the time. But you see Olave 36 receptions, Wilson 38 receptions, followed by Jeremy Ruckert, nine, Trey Sermon eight yeah julian fleming seven it's very glaring who ohio state's targeting then you look at clemson here roger 69 receptions nice. thank you uh powell 45 receptions etn 44 galloway 25 and uh it just goes on and there's like four more with over 10 receptions there obviously they have they have their favorite and rogers there but they're able to spread the ball out more than what it appears to be with Ohio state. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, as you said, it's it's six games versus 11 games. So what does any of that really mean? We're we're, we're honestly not sure what I can tell you. And what I do feel pretty good about is Ohio state being able to run the ball against this Clemson defense. This game will be run. This, uh, this game will be won in the trenches. So that Mm -hmm. is, Super obvious cliche number two from me this episode. Got to got to stop the run to win. Got to win the game in the trenches. Mm-hmm. Ohio State ranked seventh in the rushing attack per game. Two hundred and seventy-five yards on the ground. That's crazy. What I think will be interesting to see is how many designed. And by designed, I'm going to include kept um, option reads we see from Justin Fields. Designed runs, including option reads from Justin Fields. Because we all know sometimes they do the option read where Justin Fields isn't actually an option. We, we, we've we seen that from Ohio State enough in the past to, to, to know that that's a thing. Yep. So what will be interesting here to see is if Ohio State actually will allow or encourage Justin Fields to run the ball. Absolutely. Because if you get, if you get Justin Fields going along with Trey Sermon, that might be, that might be enough to make up for Justin Fields' wrist. If that's an issue, Mm -hmm. if his wrist and his thumb are still an issue, you might see, a good old fashioned urban Myers save us Braxton offense. And I think Ohio state could win the game doing that. We saw Notre Dame, at least in their first game. And we saw Boston college and we saw other teams have a lot of success against Clemson 
running the ball straight at them. Mm -hmm. I believe Ohio State can do the same. So once again, you got to win it in the trenches. Can Ohio State's defensive line defeat Clemson's offensive line? Mm -hmm. Can Ohio State's offensive line defeat Clemson's defensive line? And I believe both of the answers are yes. I agree. I agree. Now, the question is, will it be enough to make up for the glaring weakness versus the glaring strength, which is Ohio State's pass defense versus Trevor Lawrence and Clemson's pass offense? Because that's just such a glaring weakness for Ohio State. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Can they make up for that in the trenches? And I think that's just what we're going to have to find out. That's just, just what we're going to have to find out in this game. Kyle, I believe it is time for an ad read. Yes, sir. Why don't you kick us off here with our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company? Sure. I told you before why you should buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. All, all those, All those labels, the veteran-owned, Ohio-based roast oil, all that stuff. Let me, ta- let me tell you about some of their coffees. Kyle, there are a trio of coffees here from some Nordic gods. For example, there's Odin, which is a dark roast. It's a coffee that will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. There's everyone's favorite Thor, which is a medium-dark, medium-dark, sort of halfway in between. Um... It is, <laughs> it says it's thunder and lightning and will course through your veins, bleed black. Then there's the Loki, which is uh, probably the lightest coffee you're going to find from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. It's a wet process blend, uh, higher in caffeine, lower in acidity, rich tasting, uh, very fragrant, fragrant, I can't speak, uh, citrus and floral with a... Uh, uh, yeah, citrus and floral is sort of the, the dominant taste in, in this profile. So those are just some of the coffees you can get. There's also some flavored coffees, a carrot cake, a blueberry, a mint chocolate chip. So lots of great coffees. That's only a few of them. Free shipping over $50. Gift cards still available. Uh, and some of their more popular blends are available in K-Cup. So you can find out all of that uh, and more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian is still giving out his box sets indefinite. Indefinite. On over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. He has the Just Send It, which is your introductory uh, seasonings. It consists of the S&P Bud, the Snoring Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. He has the uh, the Sweet Heat which I like to call the, like the wing set. Yes. It has the four horsemen, his, his hottest uh, season, the discord, the two border and the old fashioned, or you can get the whole hog, which is one of each of the seasonings over at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. I gave out a whole hog Christmas gift this year. Yeah. How, how did that turn out? Excellently. Yes. I heard there was a lot of whiffing of the seasonings. <laughs> yes. Um, hey, I've seen less Finley mutual area, sniffing at a dog park. Uh, if you're in the Finley area on on January 2nd, this Saturday, be sure to, to head on out to the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery between 2 to 9 o'clock to get some delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian himself. Again, that is January 2nd from 2 to 9 at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery. Be sure to use the promo code SLIPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. Okay, Kyle. So we're just getting in to know your enemy. And I want to I wanna take a bit of a, a bit of look into the Clemson schedule. What do you think about that? Sure. Let's, let's take a look here, Jared. All right. So they start, they start the season off against Wake Forest. Yeah. Then they play the Citadel. Mm-hmm. 49 nothing against played, the Citadel. Yeah. Then they played Virginia. Yes. Which was closer. Yeah. Which was a closer game. Sure was. Then there was the Miami, which seemed closer, but no. 
it wasn't. No, Miami tacked on some points at the end of the mm. game to sort of yep. save some face, but Miami got their doors blown off. Clemson. Then they then they uh, just complete dominance over Georgia Tech and Syracuse. Then they had a close game against Boston College. Huh. Okay, Kyle. Does the Ohio yes. State coaching staff have any uh, friends over on the Boston College coaching staff? Perhaps. Hmm. Perhaps. Okay. Maybe maybe a maybe coach some... and uh, former player. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe some mutual sharing of knowledge took place there. Possibly. Possibly. One, one, one would say just under the table. Or over the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, then they lost to Notre Dame. Yeah. Minus Trevor Lawrence, that game and against Boston College too. Yes, yeah, yeah. That that really should be noted that they also didn't have Trevor Lawrence against Boston mm-hmm. College. Yeah. Then with Trevor Lawrence back, uh, after Florida State decided to cancel last second, uh, then they took which on which Dabo Pittsburgh. was a gentleman about, by the way. What's that? Which Dabo was a complete gentleman about. He course, totally wasn't a, a crybaby yeah, about that situation. He's always a gentleman. Yes, all the course. time. Fake ass. Then they leaders. then they took on Pittsburgh. Then they destroyed Pittsburgh. Let's let's say let's say what it was. Yeah. Then Virginia Tech made it interesting in the first half. It was like 10-10, and yeah. then it was seventeen ten at halftime. So it was a close game, but sure was. But talent took over in the second half. Yeah, and uh, that that was. You look at that, you see forty five to ten, and you make assumptions, but. Mm. No, Virginia Tech made that a game early on. Yep. And then and then just completely devastated Notre Dame. Yeah, the, on the uh, opposite side of that spectrum, game. 34-10, you know, against a really good team, 34-10 is still a really nice score, but Notre Dame was never in that game. Like that no. the 24 point difference there almost doesn't do it justice. Mhm. Yep. So a different team with Trevor Lawrence than without, which is weird because Uyangalale, I think I nailed that. Well, this is not a bad quarterback. He came in, he performed well. If we look at his stats, he went um, 900 yards in those, mm-hmm. was it two or three? I think it was, was it two games? Um, yeah, it was two games. Yeah. Five touchdowns, no interceptions, quarterback rating of 146.4. Great game. Great games. Yeah, absolutely. Not going not gonna to downplay that at all. Yeah, so it's just weird that Trevor Lawrence, even with their backup performing so well, that missing Trevor Lawrence still affected. I, I always, I'm having, I've always had trouble, and I've watched both the Boston College and the Notre Dame game. I always have trouble sort of leveling that out where the, and I've said it myself a thousand times and I'm not, I'm not even saying it's not true, but one of the things I have a lot of trouble, like I said, sort of balancing out in my head is Uyunga Lele comes in, plays well, but the team doesn't. And I, I just have a hard time wrapping my head around why the team was so much better with Trevor Lawrence even though the backup quarterback by all accounts didn't play poorly. Mm -hmm. College football, man. (laughs) College football. Fair enough. I'm just, I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to wrap my head around how seriously should we take the first loss against Notre Dame and the very close game against Boston college. Because on one hand, Trevor Lawrence didn't play. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, the backup played perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, you look at the Virginia Tech game, Trevor Lawrence barely threw for over 50%. He completed yeah. 54% of his passes. He was 12 for 22. By far his worst performance of the year. Yeah, that's the other. Justin Fields has had a couple bad performances this year. Uh, but no one seems to want to talk about the fact that so did Trevor Lawrence. It's almost like they're human. Mm-hmm. But, to <laughs> they're... Be, but to be fair to Trevor Lawrence hasn't thrown multiple picks in a game this year. Also fair. Mm-hmm. But also fair 
of his four interceptions that he's thrown have come in the last five games. That's a good stat, Kyle. That is a very good stat. Kyle, do we want to take a look at the 2019 game at all as a comparison? Um, I, ha- I actually have it up. I, I have I it. do in have it up if you want to ask away. So one of the things we already touched on was Ohio State essentially losing because of field goals. Three things. Oh, oh, hold on, Jared. Yeah. Before you go into that, the Mad Canadian is really, really upset with you right now. Okay. I didn't do his ad read. You did the ad read. He's upset with me. He's upset with you. No, I, I nailed the ad read. Okay. He's upset with you because you missed an opportunity right there. Look it up, Kyle. Look it up. I already, I already have the, I have the 2019 game up. I was prepared, Mad Canadian. <laughs> All right, all right, go along. Field goals in the red zone. Yeah, Ohio State. Three things attributes Ohio State's loss last year. One, red zone performance. Mm-hmm. Two, would be. J.K. Dobbins getting hurt and not being effective pretty much at all in the, not not the entire second half, most of the second half, which is saying something considering he still ran for 174 yards. It's, it's still almost 10 yards a pop. Yes, but he was noticeably less effective in the second half. Yes. And three, some very questionable referee calls. I really don't want to focus on the referee calls They've been talked to death over the past year. Yes, Trevor Lawrence lowered his own head. Yes, that fumble overturn was egregious. Other things. We we don't we don't need to deep dive into the referee stuff. Because bad calls will happen. It just mm-hmm. it's just a fact. Bad calls happen. You just have to not put yourself in the position to lose because of them, which is easier said than done. You're playing a team as good as Clemson. But you it's just not a thing you have control over. But let, let's take a look. Ohio State, first score, field goal. Then they get a touchdown. But then their next two scores are field goals. Ohio State, four separate occasions, marched right down into the Clemson red zone. Not, not just not just field goals here, Jared. Look at look at how long the field goals were. Yeah. Twenty one yards. 22 yards, yep. 33 yards, really close within 10 yards of the end zone. Yeah. Maybe that last one might not yeah, be. Not, but... not, not quite with the 33 yarder, but yes, your, your point is taken. Um, point is, is that Ohio State looked dominant in the first half, especially the, you know, what the first three eighths of the game looked completely dominant. And realistically, even if we only get, even if we only convert two of those field goals over into touchdowns, even if you only convert two of them, not, not all four, let's not be greedy. Let's convert two of them into touchdowns. That makes it 24 to nothing. Ohio state would have been up 24 to nothing. Ohio state does not go on to score 24 points in the entire game. And they could have had that in the first half. And not to mention too, at the end of the game there too, how much, how much do you think Olave right now, Jared? Yeah. Is thinking about that last play. I hope he's not thinking about it at all. He needs to use that as motivation. I, I think there's a time and place for that. And I think that he's on record saying that he spent a great deal of the off season thinking about it, but right now mm-hmm. he just has to think about the next game in front of him. The time about worrying about the last game is over. He's got to think about this game now. So I, I hope not a lot. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a terrible way to lose a football game on a play in which a lot of a very well could have, won it but he broke he saw something different and he broke the route off it's football shit happens point here is had ohio state gone for it 
So it's one of the reasons why I take a bit of offense and took a bit of offense to that Ryan Day quote of t- kicking field goals is okay. I don't think it is. Not in this football game. I don't think you're going to beat Clemson with field goals. You are not going to beat Clemson with field goals. As Tom Fernelli likes to say so often on Twitter, you don't make friends with field goals. No, you definitely don't. Definitely don't. Do not kick field goals in this game unless, as Kyle and I were talking about earlier, it's like th- uh, fourth and forever. On um, if it's third down, if it's third and ten, I want I want you to run that Chris Olave six yard out play. I want you to make it fourth and four, and then I want you to go for it. That is what I want. I want you to play this entire game, especially once you're in the red zone or near the red zone. I want Ryan Day and this offense to be playing the entire game as if they have four downs. Once you get on the other side of that 50 yard line, once you're in Clemson's territory, that is now fourth down territory for the entire game. And again, again, if you get stuck in a situation in which it is fourth and 17, kick the field goal. Mm -hmm. But play every drive like it is a four down drive. Your defense. Your secondary, your passing defense is not good enough to hold off Clemson the entire game. You have to go for the jugular right away. And three first half field goals will not get it done. It will not get it done against this this Clemson football team. It will not get it done with this Ohio State defense. And it will not get it done against Trevor Lawrence. It's just, it's not going to get it done. I beg of you, Ryan Day, Kevin Wilson. It's four down territory the second you get across the 50 yard line. Mm-hmm. Well, now is the question, Jared. Will they get it done? Our state has not beaten Clemson in their four visits well, or their four attempts against them. Yeah. 0 and 4. 2014, 16, and 19. 0 and 4 against Clemson. One game, <laughs> one game cost you arguably the best coach. Or at least at the most transformative coast coach in Ohio State history, Woody mm-hmm. Hayes made Ohio State relevant. We can have yeah. conversations about, you know, Urban Meyer and this and that, but yeah, and you, you can look at all of these games here minus the 2016, which is a complete blowout. But the other three games here, all one possession game, six yeah. points last year, five points in 2014, and. Two points back in 78. Yeah, 2014. Braxton Miller basically. That it his, that's it for him being a quarterback. Yeah, that was it. That was his was last game, game being a quarterback because of that shoulder injury. Mm-hmm. Point here is that Ohio State's never beat Clemson. It's time to fix that. But it it sucks because no one wants no one wants to talk about that. All right, Kyle, mm-hmm. is it time for the final score prediction? Yes, it is. Ohio State is a seven and a half point underdog. It's Clemson. The over under in this game, Jared? Yeah. 66 and a half. 66 and a half. 66 and a half. So it's, it's fallen a point. It was it opened at 67. Just tossing that out there. Maybe Vegas knows something that we don't. No, because Vegas sets it at 67, and if they move it, it's just because, and that just means a lot of people are betting the under, is all that means. Got it. Okay. All right, Jared, final prediction here for the Ohio State game against Clemson. So what do you have? In the Vegas of, of ways of talking about my final prediction of this game, my final prediction of this game, or my semi, my almost final prediction of this game, which, by the way, is the Sugar Bowl. Have we not mentioned that the entire episode? Well, and that, that's the other thing, too. You can look at, of the four games that, the, that Ohio State's played, Clemson, two in Florida and two in Arizona. Now, what, the Gator Bowl, the... Orange and Fiesta Bowl. Yeah, and then last year, which would have also been the Fiesta Bowl, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and Ohio State has had a good... Had a good recent success in the Sugar Bowl, too. Yeah. All right. All right. So high level prediction of this game is one of the teams is going to have the ball with, you know, under a minute, under under a minute and a half left. 
and they're going to be mm-hmm. driving with the ball and they're going to need a, a, a field goal to tie it or a touchdown to win it. It's going to come down to that last drive and someone is going to have to make a play. Someone on the offense, someone on the defense, someone with Ohio state, someone with Clemson. I don't know which quarterback's going to have the ball in their hand. I don't know who's going to make that play, but ultimately I think that's how this game ends. Someone's going to get a shot at it at the end and someone else is going to have to make a play mm-hmm. that that's just what it, that's how this game ends on that. It's going to be on the last drive. And therefore I think the seven and a half is ludicrous. The fact that they're giving Clemson, if it was six and a half, I, mm-hmm. I think it's that big of a difference. That's that touchdown. That's that beautiful touchdown right there. Seven points there. That that the seven and a half is ridiculous in my opinion. So from that perspective, Ohio State. Yeah. If we're talking I about I, I think from a Vegas be, standpoint, I, pick Ohio State all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think so too. And going back to the four games that Ohio State's played, Clemson all have been a one possession game minus the 2016. But I yeah, I don't I I don't think the people listening care about the Vegas no. portion of it. Who wins? No. So here's my final score prediction. I was about to do a drum roll, but then I, I realized it's not going to work. So mm-hmm. who, who I, I'm going to pick Ohio state and I'm going to do the final score at 38 to 35. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be Clemson. I think Clemson's going to have the ball in their hand at the end of the game. And I think someone on the Ohio state side is going to have to make a play to win the football game. And I think someone does. And I'm not 100% sure who that is yet. I kind of think it's going to be someone along the defensive line making that last second sack or maybe a strip sack or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of want to say a defensive lineman wins it for Ohio State, sealing the victory with a sack or maybe a forced interception or a forced fumble or something along those lines against Trevor Lawrence as Clemson is driving to win the game. And Ohio State wins. 38 to 35. Yeah. Game seven is typically towards the, in the normal year is towards the end of October. And that's usually for most seasons, usually when Ohio state starts to peak, we start to see, Oh, Hey, this is the Ohio state team that we know. This is what the, this is what we're expecting. And I think this is going to be Ohio state's best performance of the year. Um, And I have Ohio state 35 Clemson 31. You know, that was actually my original score prediction. Mm-hmm. But then I just said, no, more points than that are going to be scored. So I upped it to 38-35. Which, by the way, for all of my talk, does include Ohio State kicking a field goal. <laughs> so, again, so if it's going to be fourth and long, maybe you got to. Or maybe it's a, it's a game winner and you got to. Mm-hmm. By the way, let's just not make this one of those games in which we have to ask the question. Everyone jumps on Twitter and asks the question, did Ohio State score too soon? Because if you got to ask the question, it's probably true. So, I mean, I mean, look, look at last year, like when Clemson scored, when they scored to take the lead last year, there was a minute 18 left. Yeah. And Ohio State drove down the field there to, they were at the, they're at the 20 yard line. They're essentially right yeah. there at the 20 yard line to win the game with over with like 40 seconds left. Don't score too soon. Don't score too soon. All right, Kyle, let's do some ask sloop. Cast. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. You gave your final score. Kyle, let's, uh, let's do some ask sloop cast questions. Then let's GTFO. All right. Austin formation, which by the way, he says here, he has a final score. Ohio state 28 Clemson. 45 yikes so sorry i'm a bad fan also the only one who won the game in our pick last year you know i don't i don't know why that matters 2019 <laughs> right. anyway he asks 2020, here 2020. <laughs> anyway he asks here jared who has more surprising who was more surprising as an nfl dud haskins or troy smith both are baffling but which did you expect to be a more surefire prospect coming out of Ohio State? Oh, Haskins for sure. I don't know if Troy Smith. Troy Smith was never a sure thing. No, he was. I, I he was fourth 
fifth round pick. Mm -hmm. Haskins was a first round pick. Yeah. So yes. Haskins. And by the way, I'm just, I'm not done with Haskins yet. I'm not, I'm not either. He was put in a terrible position and it was set up to fail right from the start. Yes. But with that, but but when he got benched, he reacted very immaturely. And that's yes, with that being said, his reaction and how he took the opportunities that were given to him, he didn't, he just didn't take it. He didn't excel. I mean, in the NFL, if you're given opportunity, you, you better shine or else you may be job searching. Yeah. And he'll maybe get an opportunity to go somewhere else. Age. <laughs> Get grow 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 a little bit of maturity and and maybe get another shot someday. Yeah. All right. Uh, Nomad asks us, Jared. He th- he's still CB- around. Hmm. He's still around. Nomad. Yeah. It's just it's just a nomad joke. I listen. I feel bad about it. Don't worry about it. Move forward. If CBS starts airing Big Ten football games, should the conference mandate the announcers get rid of those stuffy, snooty SEC frat house CBS Blazers? Are you saying the Big Ten would shut down something that's stuffy and snooty? What? It's the (laughs) stuffiest and snootiest of all the Big Five conferences, except maybe the Pac-12. No. I I mean, well, should. Yes, should they? Yes. Yes, they should. Will they? No. Also, the Big Ten is fully in bed with Fox at this point, so I I wouldn't worry about any of that. Yep. All right. uh, Let's see here. No matter also asks us how much play action do you expect Ohio State to use against Clemson? Um, you, establish, you establish the run game. How much play action? I, I think they'll use it quite a bit. I really do. You got to make Clemson honest. Yeah, I mean, if they Keep establish the run, it almost feels like a waste not to. Yes. Um, last question from him: Is it possible for Dabo not to look like a smug sob? Well, he didn't used to, or maybe, maybe we just laughed at him before because he was undeservedly smug, kind of like every Will Ferrell character. But now that he actually has some weight behind his smugness, maybe we find it less tolerable. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I think I think it's really just him trying to point out that Dabo is a douchebag, and we agree. Fake ass Ned Flanders is in fact. Completely agree. Right, Brawley asks us, true or false? The 2021 football season proceeds as a normal non-COVID year football season. Um, As far as if you're defining season as September, August, you know, maybe like August through January. Yes. I don't know where we stand with a spring game or with spring practices and all that. I, I don't, I don't, we're, we're as a society, not going to be back to normal, like normal, normal. We'll be closer, but I don't think we're going to be like normal, normal by April. Um, so if you're including the spring game in that false, uh, if you're not including the spring game in that, I'd say true. I'd say you are, you're, you're getting, you're getting there. I wouldn't, I'm still going to say there's still going to be issues in the early part of the fall. But that just that's just my opinion on everything I've been hearing in real life and all that. So yeah, I'm yeah. Just, the the spring the spring I don't think I don't think the spring game is happening at all. I don't I don't think that's happening at all. I I but, tend to agree with you. I just wasn't trying to be so certain about maybe, it. Maybe they'll have a spring I, game I for just internally, no fans or anything. They may do that. Right. They're, yeah. It's not you're not you're not going to have eighty thousand people in the shoe in yeah. April. Nope. All right, Suncard asks us, will this game be one in the trenches and who has the advantage there? I think we've answered that. We answered that one. I, I think it can be one in the trenches, and if it is, the, it favors Ohio State. Mm-hmm. So I. The offense, so the, the answer offensive to your line question is hopefully. The offensive line, definitely Ohio State. I think Ohio State has a better chance of their offensive line versus Clemson's defensive line. And then the other way around, I'd say I'd say that's probably that's going to be a really good matchup there to see who's who's going to get that leverage there. I'd be really curious there. Well, Just because I would how, also how well Haskell and um, and Togiai has been playing. 
Well, I'd, I'd also frame it like this. From a running game perspective, Ohio State is going to win in the trenches, offensively and defensively. From a pass game perspective, you'd give a slight advantage to Clemson probably in both areas, offensive line versus defensive line. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Sun Card also asks us, when can we get a Cobra Commander style Sloopcast shirt? Um, I, you, well, we, we I, I need more. I can't just like put a Cobra, Cobra Commander shirt on the T Public page and then just put the word Sloopcast on it and call it a t shirt. I need a little bit more than that. If you have a design mm-hmm. idea, let me know. That's that's it. That's that's the tweet. Uh, Nomad asks us, since you hate polls, which metrics do you put more weight into when evaluating teams in conference strength? That's the thing is that you 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 can't. We basically are forced to overvalue September cross conference games. And this year you just can't. You just can't. Because the bowl games are meaningless. The out-of-conference games were all canceled. Who the hell knows? That That's it. Who the hell knows? And as far as a normal season goes, again, you just put a little too much stock, admittedly, but you put a little too much stock in those out-of-conference games in September, and you try and determine from that. Outside of that, you just have to maybe watch a lot of football. and Because... If you watch enough football and you watch enough of it closely, you can tell who's good and who's bad outside of results, outside mm-hmm. of stats. You know what I mean? Like it, if, if you've watched a lot of football, you know, when you're watching two good teams versus two bad teams. Yes. Yep. Yep. If you're, but you got to kind of watch it closely and you have to have been watching as much football over the years as I think a lot of the people who are probably listening to this podcast have. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, see Dur 19 in our discord. Cooper. Will Ohio state move Sean into the slot to cover Amari Rogers. So uh, that is a good point. Amari Rogers likes to play in the slot a lot. He's all over the field. So that's a good question. Should Sean way just cover him no matter where he's at? No. Uh, and I and I say no because I don't want Ohio State playing a lot of man. The typical Ohio State defense defense of man to man with one safety high, you're going to get screwed doing that against Clemson. You're just going to get screwed. So as far as like matching up strength on strength, their best versus our best, that that's man to man talk. And I think Ohio State's going to be better served playing a lot of zone in this particular game. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go into our our other Discord friends here, Jared. Uh, young kids, Midwest. Should the CFP go full BCS style and just use computer metrics calculations with a human committee only there as a backup? Not exactly. Or should college football just become a glorified NFL style? Well, you you know how we feel about NFL styling things as far as making college football a, a, you know, a a semi-pro sort of league. If not, go back and listen to our podcast episode, A Radical Plan to Fix College Football. Outside of that, um, yeah, the problem with formulas. Here's your problem with formulas. Either one... The formula is public, and if the formula is public, then people will just manipulate the formula. Oh, I have to win by 14 points in order to call it a big win? Well, then you're just going to have teams making sure they win by 14 points, completely making the metric worthless. Yeah. Now it's no longer a good metric. That's, what is that? That's the... I forget uh, that there, there's a terminal. There's a term for that, but basically the term, I can't remember the name of the term, but essentially 
the second a metric becomes a standard, it's no longer a good metric. Mm -hmm. Uh, Really trying to remember what that that idiom is called. I'll let you think about that. We've got one last question here. By which would be the best linebacker? Well, I sorry, I want to I want to finish that thought. The second half of that is that if the formula is not made public, then people mm-hmm. just aren't going to trust it. Or so they'll they'll get pissed off because they don't know what the formula actually says. Does the formula include recruiting rankings? Should it? Does it include big wins? Uh, scoring margin? Should it? Does it include yards gained or yard differential? Should it? People aren't going to sign over to a formula if they don't know what the formula says. And and on the other side of that, if you make the formula public, then all of the metrics are now screwed because they're no longer metrics, they're goals. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, if you keep, or maybe it's like 2B, if the formula is secret, People will work to decipher the formula and crack the formula. And then you go back to problem one. So now you have a secret formula that no one trusts that then people are now also manipulating because they cracked what the formula does. All right, Kyle, that's, that's my entire thought on that. All right. One last question from him. Um, Which would be the best linebacker to place in the spy position? against um, Trevor Lawrence, Pete Warner or Justin Hilliard? By the way, it's called Goodhart's Law. Uh, Goodhart's Law states... um, Any observed statistical regularity will... uh, That's not what I wanted. Do-do-do-do-do. Anyway, no, no one's here to listen about Goodhart's Law. Sorry about that. But that, that is what it's called. Uh, here it goes. When a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. That's Goodhart's Law. And that's why a com- straight-up computer formula will not work in college football. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, quarterback spy. The quarterback spy, well, first and foremost, it shouldn't be the same person all the time because you don't necessarily want them to know that. But it should probably be a combination, I would say, of of Hilliard and and Pete Warner would be my would be my take on that. Okay, I think that's all the questions here, Jared. Oh, one 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 thing that I um I did a poll in our Discord here, just asking our fellow Discords um, followers on there, how do you feel about the upcoming game? Um, I gave them that. The Buckeyes are going to kick ass, feeling good, unsure, not good, or I'm going to hide under my pillow. Okay. So the vast majority of them, or over over half of them, had said unsure. While coming up second is feeling good. So kind of that in between yeah. there. I, I don't think feels. anyone feels absolutely amazing going into this game. I think if you do, you're feeling a little too... A little too good. Um, yeah. Let me a- let me check the Ask Sloopcast again real quick. And um, Stuart underscore E four U S vet says, uh, "I under uh, Dabo Sweeney sucks. I understand this isn't the question, but the statement needs to be made." All right, there we go. I just right, wanted to get that in there. <laughs> All right, uh, that is the end of today's episode. Um, I want to encourage everyone to check out the Patreon. If you want to do the live listen ins and provide live comments, you can join our patron, a page, our tra- Patreon page, become a patron, uh, $3 or more gets you premium access to the discord. And that premium access to the discord is what you need to do the live listen ins. Our discord, however, is free. It's mostly free channels. Uh, there are some, uh, premium channels on the discord. And that does include access to, to do the live listen-ins, but come into the discord server, check it out. If it's fun, if you like it, consider upgrading to the, to the $3 a month or higher. There are higher tiers that provide new, better additional benefits, but consider joining at that $3 tier and, uh, come hang out with us and do some live listen-ins. 
And uh, I think that's, that's all the plugging I feel like doing. Uh, just go check out Sloopcast. Uh, excuse me. Go check out the Sloopcast.com. Uh, and there you will find uh, links to all of our things, all of our YouTube things, all of our Twitter things, all of our Spotify, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. I think I already said YouTube things. So go ahead and uh, go to thesloopcast.com, including links to the Discord, including links to the Patreon. It's just it's just a page filled with links. So go check out thesloopcast.com to find all of our stuff. Also, our merch stores. And I'm not going to go any more detail on that because I'm tired of talking. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's Corner? Um, Just talk about the upcoming schedule. I think I mentioned this in our last episode, but I'll, I'll repeat again. Buckeye, Buckeye schedule coming up here. Um, as it's being released, it's already happened, but Ohio State um, taking on Nebraska Wednesday at 6.30. And then they go on, to, on the road to take on Minnesota Sunday night at 5.00. 30. Excellent. Is that it for Kyle's corner? That is all. Just any last comments or statements of this upcoming game here? It's, it's the big one here. It's the semifinal game to see who gets to take on Alabama. <laughs> Just not even giving Notre Dame a chance, huh? What was that? It was 19 point favorite. Uh, we talked. We just talked about it on the Monday episode, and I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not giving Notre Dame any chance either. They're yeah. Clem- uh, Notre Dame is better than Clemson on any given day right now, and we all saw what Clemson did to Notre Dame. Uh, I quite frankly don't like Ohio State's chances against Bama this year, but maybe I'll see something this Friday to make me feel different. Maybe. I just I just think Bama's sort of a cut above this year, which we should all probably be used to by now. And that's not to say that neither Clemson nor Ohio State stand a chance because both of these teams are absolutely good enough to beat Bama because you only got to beat them once. But I do think Bama's a, a cut above right now. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see how all of that plays out or if that's even a thing we need to worry about or not. For right now, let's just beat Clemson. And uh, I think that's it. So uh, tonight's ending music will be by a, I believe they're Columbus based or they're Ohio based. I believe they're Columbus based. They're called paper morning. So go check out paper morning. I'll provide links to the song and to maybe their website or their band camp page or something along those lines down in the show notes. So go check out the show notes for more information on paper morning, uh, check out the show notes for a link to the And, uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Paper Morning. What's up, YouTube? How you guys yo, doing? Yo, uh, are Discord folks still hanging around, or did they hop out on they us? They are. Um, Stuart was just dropped off. Austin's still there. Hello, Austin. Thanks for joining us. I think Austin was there the entire time. He has been, yes. There's a bit of Oof. Apollo sighting. Apollo, ever since I moved down to the small studio, down into the basement studio, the dogs don't hop up on my lap as much. I know people are, I know at least one person, very disappointed by that. But uh, they're down here. They're both down here. Well, one thing we forgot to mention here, Joe, though, but we'll, we'll bring it up here. Sure. Just ask you a simple question YouTube, there for the YouTube folks here. YouTube and exclusive. And for Austin who's listening. You, YouTube plus Austin exclusive. How likely do you see Garrett coming back next year? Uh, High school Garrett. We talked about that on the Monday show. Um, I, I, I don't have a good prediction. I'll just say 50, 50 for right now. I don't know. Okay. All right. How do you feel? I'm going to go 51, 49 that he is leaving. Okay. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't, I don't know why I was so, so intrigued to hear what you were going to say about that, about your one percent leaning point. But that's where we are. Come on, bud. One percent. You can do it. Come on, let's do. Come on, we're going to do the ad read. You ready? Okay. I can't, I can't pick mine up. Mine's, mine's gone. He's asleep. He's being a dog. Yours is up on a chair though, so our YouTube people can actually see him. All right, let's end this episode. Uh, Let's rejoin our audio listeners. 
Once again, I'd like to thank Paper Morning for ending today's episode, and I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch, fresh roast-to-order, Toledo, Ohio-based, fair trade certified, USD organic, integrity-based coffee roaster. That's right. Some mm. coffees, some of their most popular coffees are available in K-Cup. Gift cards are available. Free shipping over $50. And you can get a six-pack of samplers if you're looking for that one coffee that's just your coffee. And if you do find that one coffee that's just your coffee, you can do a subscribe and save service where you can get coffee delivered to you on schedule as often as you need it, I assume. I've never actually done it, so I don't know how often you get to do it, but you can do it as often as you want, probably, and uh, you can save money doing so. Uh, if you uh, want to check out all of their awesome coffees, uh, I actually have, of course, I have the camera blur on, so you can't really see them too well, but that's the Rage Against the Dying of the Light on top. You really, you really can't see it because it's kind of out of frame too. Nope. And below that's the ride or die. And next to that's the unicorn. And the unicorn is a flavored coffee. What's it flavored like? I don't know. And neither will you. Not till you get it. Uh, it's an R and D coffee. Uh, it's a uh, pat. It's a just a sample. It's not not a sampler. It's a full bag of coffee. But uh, it's a uh, it's sort of a specialty. Tr- uh, research and development uh what's the word i'm looking for here experimental flavor so you can you can check that out for yourself uh grab a bag and just see what shows up uh once again that's the unicorn and they have a lot of amazing coffees most of them aren't flavored if flavored coffees aren't your thing and you can find all of that and more at ironbeancoffee.com that's iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster this episode was also brought to you by the mad canadian barbecue company Mad Canadian Barbecue Company will be out at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery in Finley, January 2nd, this Saturday from 2 to 9 p.m. Come check out the Mad Canadian to get some of his delicious barbecue. Again, this Saturday, 2 to 9 o'clock, the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery. If you can't make it out, be sure to pick, be sure to go online at themadcanadianbbq.com to pick up some of the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has on his website, including the Coffee and Q, the Snoring Heat, the smoked, the carry steak, and the Mad Hatter. I don't think I really talk much about the Mad Hatter. Uh, check out all those great seasoning and much, much more over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. Mm-hmm.